In this video, I'm gonna teach you a powerful method for lighting yourself beautifully, even if you don't have the most amazing tools. This is part two of my lighting mastery series, where I talk to you about what we can do with what you might have or how to find the right lights, but basically how to understand the principles underneath so you can create beautiful lighting for yourself, whether it's for Microsoft Teams, whether it's for showing up in Zoom meetings, or whether it's for creating videos here on YouTube. This video is all about diffusion. Now, if you've heard this term before, you're not quite sure what it is or how to use it, I'm gonna break it down, make it super simple, and show you how, once you understand what it means and how to do it, you can use everyday items you have around to really change the quality of light and make it gorgeous, darling. Yeah. And if we're just meeting, hi, I'm Gia Goodrich. I am a content creator here on YouTube. I love teaching people how to show up confidently in video. I also have an amazing podcast, link below if you wanna listen, hang out with me every week. But what's most relevant to this video is I have been a professional photographer for the last 15 years. I've worked with mega big brands like Nike, Adidas, all of this stuff. And what I've done is worked with thousands of people and created and sculpted light to make them look as amazing as possible. So if you're feeling inferior because you're showing up to these meetings, you're trying to work with what you have, you're maybe in a hotel because you're needing to travel for something and you're not getting that quality, you're not feeling as confident, this is the video for you. I'm gonna show you the tool of diffusion to help you sculpt and create any light so it is beautiful. But really quickly, before we dig in, I have a favor because I know you're generous and I know you're amazing. If you can just take a second to like and leave me a comment, not only does it feel good and sparkly and wonderful inside for me, because you know, I'm just as insecure as everybody else, so it feels great to read nice comments, but also it helps the algorithm. It tells YouTube that my videos are good and should be seen, so it helps more people find and engage with my content. So thank you in advance. You're awesome. I appreciate you. I don't know what these are about, but let's dig in. In the first video, we really went over the foundation of what a beautiful light is. And it's this acronym, SAIL, that you need to know, which is the type of light that's always gonna be amazing for you. Check this video out if you haven't seen it yet. I highly recommend. I go in specifically on what that means and why we want soft angle from above in front and a large light source in order to light ourselves beautifully. And then I talked about the big rule, right? Which is never take a bulb to the face. If that doesn't mean anything to you, go back. Come back, I'll be waiting for you here. But for those of you who did watch the video, yes, okay, let's move on. One of the big issues when we are talking about lamps, we're talking about the sun, we're talking about different ways that we can light ourselves, is that it's always going to have a core light source. So it's always gonna have a center that's the most intense. You can think the center of a flashlight, and that is going to be the hard punch across the face, lighting-wise, that we don't want. So what we're going to do is learn to diffuse light, which basically means that we're taking that harsh, harsh center and then that fall off and we're redistributing it. And what we're doing is spreading the intensity of that light out so that there isn't one super, super bright spot. To better understand how diffusion works, we need to talk about a guiding principle called the family of angles. In a nutshell, what it means is that for every light source, you're gonna have multiple angles of light that are gonna hit you in different directions. The smaller the light source in proportion to you, the more narrow that beam is. This is when we get harsh shadows, this is when we get lots of skin textures. The larger that light source and the more diffused it is, the more the light is scattered across that whole plane instead of having a big bright spot, the more those angles are just gonna like and really kiss your skin and your face in a really flattering way. So let me show you how this works. Okay, just really quickly, chiming in from the future to tell you that I felt like this next section deserved a little bit of drawing to illustrate what I was gonna do. And thankfully, my amazing editor, Allie, whoop, whoop, is good at drawing. So if you see her hands that don't look like these, that's why. You have you right here, and you have this little desk lamp. And what's happening are these angles don't have very far there isn't a big range in what's hitting your face. So that beam in and of itself is going to be narrow, which means it's going to be harsh and all the things. So instead, let's back it up and start with a new drawing. You're here. There's still this little craptastic light source. If you put a diffusion material here, 
and you give enough room for the light source to hit it, it's going to hit it with all these different angles. What's going to hit you is this bigger range of all of these angles with an overall softness and intensity. That's what's going to create this really beautiful, even light. So how do we do this? Well, let's turn the lights out. Right now is a great example of what I see happening a lot of times where we have the cardinal rule being broken, never point a bulb to the face. I have one of these cute like Pixar lamps and in there is the bulb. And this is what I see happening a lot when people are trying to light themselves, they'll point the bulb right toward them. What's happening is you see these bright spots here, these are called specular highlight. This is where the center of the bulb, the place with the most intensity is hitting my face. And these highlights are deeply undesirable and you can tell, let's move a little bit forward so you can see even more. What you may notice is that you're really seeing the texture in my skin. There are a couple things with this light source <laughs> that are happening simultaneously. It's a small light source compared to me, it's about, if I spread my palm out, the whole dish itself is about the size of my palm. But where the light is coming from is the light bulb size. So it's only this big of a light source that's hitting me. So it's going to mean that the light inherently is hard because soft light comes from a close, big source. A hard light comes from a small source or a source that's very far away. So you can tell in the quality that these are really sharp shadows that are happening because of this hardness of the light. So what is the goal of diffusion? It's to find a material that is semi-translucent. So you can still see my hands behind it. And what that does is it spreads the light across this whole surface. So instead of having a small light source that's the size of a light bulb, with this in front of it, it will turn it into this giant light source. So I'm gonna take photography gear to show you how to do this, but you can just do this the same with a shower curtain. Now if we look, those specular highlights are gone and I'm getting this really beautiful even glow. Let me show you what's going on here. So here is that big piece of diffusion. Behind it is my little light source. And then this is why I had to uh, switch cameras is because my camera is still back here. So this is literally what the computer screen is seeing. This is with diffusion and then I'll show you without. Yeah, you can see definitely less forgiving, less flattering, all the things. Diffusion is most powerful when you can create enough distance between the light source and the material. There are lots of angles that are about to hit it and then keeping you relatively close to that will allow it to wrap around you in a really beautiful way. A great example that we see with diffusion all the time is just curtains. When the sun's streaming through, we throw our curtains down and all of a sudden, that little speck of sun that we see is then spread out across all of the curtains. Now diffusion can really be seen in a lot of different ways. In this video right here, I talked about the Gia Ball, which is my favorite strategy for adding a light that also operates as home decor that creates this diffusion layer that softens the light source and takes it from something that's really hard to something that's super, super beautiful. But also if you're looking at lighting kits, this is where we see options like soft boxes and shoot through umbrellas. Both of those are great ways to diffuse the light and take out that harsh hot spot. The one thing to remember is the mistake a lot of people make is when they're using an umbrella is they'll keep the light bulb really close to the end of it and still thinking the umbrella is gonna work. But that only works if you back the light source away enough so that that family of angles can hit it and then that diffusion material can spread it out even more. Now that we've covered diffusion, are you ready for part three? We're gonna talk about the bounce in the next video. Diffusion really means that you need to have a fair amount of space. Bounce is a technique if you don't have very much, if you're like pushed up against the wall and your desk is there, how to really make lighting work for you under those situations. So I will see you in the next video, but before you go, I just have to say, you are magic. You are amazing, I see you, I appreciate you, I love you, and I hope that you have people around you who are telling you how amazing you are, but if not, you have me. Because I think you're sparkletastic and fantabulous, and I really hope that you internalize that, take that in so you can show up on video, in those Zoom meetings, those Microsoft Team meetings, with confidence, because confidence is key. But what does that even mean? Confidence is knowing you can do what you set out to do.
And the only way to do that is by showing yourself over and over and over again. So all of this lighting stuff might feel a little wonky, a little nerve wracking, but once you get used to it, once you've tried and you've done meeting after meeting, you've adjusted the light, you know what's gonna work for you, that's when you start to show up confidently. Once you find that place where you're looking good, that's where all the magic happens. I will see you in the next video. In the meantime, judge yourself a little less, love yourself a little more, and just know that I love you, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.